Rhonda Draculis here, RK3 Designs, and we're going to do a really fun technique today where we um, take the epoxy and make it look like hammered copper. I'm starting off with a um, half inch MDF sample board. It's been routered over uh, top and bottom so that your epoxy really flows over well. On your edges, your epoxy is thinner than on the top because uh, your epoxy naturally wants to flow. I'm going to go ahead and pre-fog my edges. And the reason I'm gonna do it copper is because that's the color uh, of the epoxy that I'm gonna tint. So when it breaks over and it's the thinnest right here on the corner, I don't want you to see my baseboard color. I really want you to see the copper color. So I'm gonna fog it first. And you only have to do the edges because it's really all you're going to be seeing is the breakover. It's really all I'm trying to uh, make the eye, uh, kind of fool the eye when that epoxy goes over. You're going to see the copper and not the base color. Next step. So this is all I did. I fogged the edges and uh, get ready for the next step. So I've let my edges dry. I've already mixed up some epoxy here, stone coat countertop, and I'm going to add some metallics. So what I want to do, I'm going to be using the stone coat countertop brown metallic and the stone coat countertop copper metallic. And I'm going to split my epoxy in half. Now I've already added some um, mica powder to this cup. So I like to add the mica powder before I add the um, epoxy because then when you go to stir it, it's not airborne as much as if you add the epoxy first and then add the mica powder on top. Just kind of helps in the mixing process. All right, in this other epoxy, I'm gonna mix in some copper and a little bit goes a long way. So I'm just putting it, I really want it very, very opaque. So I am putting a little more than I would normally, but I really want this to be a very opaque tint. Okay, so I have my brown and I have my copper. And I'm just gonna pour them on the board. No rhyme or reason, just getting it on the board. Now I'm gonna pour these side by side and you'll real, really kind of see the difference of the colors when they're just side by side. Isn't that pretty? There's not a big contrast, but just enough to, to kind of give some visual interest. At this point, you can either decide to use a trial, a 1 8 by 1 8 uh, square notch trial, but since this is a pretty small area, I'm not gonna dirty up a trial, I'm just gonna use my hands. So I don't really wanna mix these two, I just want them to kind of meld. So I'm not gonna really get in here and mix it, I just wanna get epoxy on the board. Now, with this effect, the least amount that I can actually touch my epoxy, the better. Now, you could play with me metallics all day long because they really, ugh, they're so much fun. So you could just see Look at the designs I can make with this. Now look at that, is that, that's just so cool. The problem is it doesn't stay like that. It, it moves because epoxy is self-leveling. So what we're gonna do on this piece is I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna torch it uh, real quick just to get the bubbles out. And then I'm gonna let this set for about 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, before I go on to my next step because I want that epoxy to kind of start setting up a little bit before I go to the next step. So my patterns are gonna be held a little longer than a freshly poured epoxy. 
Okay, so I'm going to torch out the bubbles. This is a, something else I don't like to do with this finish. I don't like to add a lot of heat. The more you add heat, you're obviously heating up your epoxy and that's going to cause movement. What I'm trying to achieve with this is for my epoxy to set up and um, allow the micas to kind of sit there and my pattern to kind of sit there. So I'm going to kind of torch as least amount as possible. And when I do torch, I'm going to go in and get out. So everything looks good right now. I'll jump back on camera here in about 20 minutes and uh, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so we're back. Like I told you, remember the really pretty effects that we had when we first laid it down? Look at it now. Very, very uh, quiet compared to what we had. So what's happened is the micas have settled down as the epoxy starting to uh, self-level. The mica powders have just kind of floated down to the bottom. So what we're going to do now is we're going to wake them all up and have them come back up to the top and do a couple of other things. And then depending on how it goes from there, we may sit a little longer and then do some after effects. So what I wanna do now, there's several ways you can do this and they all involve very, very expensive tools. So I'm gonna use a shop towel. And what I did is I just kind of rolled, if you notice how I rolled that shop towel up and I also, I made sort of a a rose with it so that it's going to have some texture to it so when I hit that it's going to really cause some some patterns so I'm going to take it and I'm just going to kind of hit it and I'm randomly twisting and turning and causing some really cool effects because now that mica is really getting turned up in there and waking up. Now that right there is kind of a cool finish. Just, just that right there. Uh, I'm gonna have to hit it just a hair with the heat gun to pop the bubbles, but I just wanna do the bare minimum because if I, if I really heat it up a lot, I'm gonna be back to square one because I'm heating up my epoxy and then everything's gonna settle. So now that I've kind of moved it around, it, it's really looking neat. Um, you can even go and if you, you know, if you don't wanna do that, you can take an old glove and you can just take that and slide it across and create some really fun effects with that and play like this. But my favorite, obviously, is going in with my hands and causing some really neat effects. Look at that. I'm waking all that epoxy up. And I'm gonna really try not to hit this again with my torch if I can get away with it. Because I really want my micas to stay up on top. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of alcohol. And I want big, big drops on here. There we go. I want some big drops. So that when I hit it, it's gonna cause a pattern. So I'm gonna come here and really hit that and I'm kind of forcefully hitting it. So it's causing some rings. Now you won't see this immediately, but as it starts to set up, you'll see the alcohol kind of playing with the epoxy and causing some really neat effects. Now one thing about this finish is you really have to give the epoxy time to react. Uh, it's not, this is obviously not a, a finish that you can come in and be done in just you know one process. So it does take a little bit of time. Now I'm coming back with clay. Clay is one of those colors that could really overpower really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda just start up in the corners so that I don't 
overpower myself too quickly. And that's really cool. Now you could definitely stop right here and have a really cool hammered effect. You could also come back and say, well, I'm really not liking this, so I'm just gonna do this to this corner. You could come back and play with it and get those micas back up. I said I was only gonna do the corner, but I'm doing the whole thing. And so you just keep adding layers and layers of interest um, as you kind of keep playing with it. Now, you could stop right here and have yourself a really cool finish. Um, copper tarnishes, and a lot of time, you like that patina is very desirable. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of um, the real teal. And the teal, to me, with copper is really pretty because it almost gives a patina look. Um, it'll give that sheen of that your copper is kind of oxidized, I guess, and, and left a really cool patina look. Now I like that. I'm gonna come back in here and kind of manipulate it a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. I like that a lot. Now there's another way if you really want some patina on there, you can come in with some green paint and I have a gloss meadow green and I'm gonna hit it just a little bit and I'm gonna come back with my copper. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna just fog a little bit of the green on here and then I'm gonna hit it with alcohol. And that really kind of gives a really cool look if you want kind of a patina look on here. So that's two different ways to achieve a uh, patina look on here. Now that is looking really cool right here. I really like that. So you have two different ways. You have your plain copper without any alcohols on top uh, or any colored alcohol. And then I did a spot here where I use the green paint, spray paint, and then immediately hit it with the gold alcohol mica powder. And then over here, I hit it with the real teal mica. So you can get several looks out of this. And um, I can stop here, or I can even go a step farther and give it another 20 minutes or so and let it set up a little bit more, come back, wake up the mica powders again, and get a whole new look. So um, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to let it sit a little bit and uh, we'll be back and see what else we can do with it. And I've let it sit about 20 minutes and it's really started to move. The uh, epoxy has uh, kind of uh, worked with the alcohol and caused some really neat effects. So let's say you come back in 20 minutes and you're like, um, I like this, I don't like this, I like this. At this point, because the, the nature of the epoxy and you have so much open time with stone coat countertop epoxy, I'm gonna just come and play with it and I'm gonna actually really now wake up this mica again and I'm gonna just get some really cool effects now. Now if you'll see, ah, you'll see where this green paint was is really gonna give a neat look as we wake up those mica powders. And oh man, now it really looks like it could be a, a patina look. But I'm just gonna come in here, I just wanna wake everything up. Now it really looks like this could be a hammered finish. And I'm just kind of waking that up. I'm kind of bringing this green. I'm gonna just really kind of mix it in so it's kind of a background color. And you can just see now that the epoxy is setting up, my pattern is gonna stay a lot better 
than it did when we first poured it. So all of this movement is more likely to really stay in the finish. Now, I also love to come and do like a skip, take my hand and just kind of skip across it and look at that movement that you can create. I really like that look. That is really a cool look right there. Okay, yeah, I really like that. So I'm gonna come in with my copper mica and alcohol. I want really big, big drops. So I'm gonna open up my sprayer, test it off the table. Here we go. Now when I drop this on here, I'm doing big drops. I'm not giving it very fine mist. I want some really big, bold drops on here. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my clay. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I'm gonna get some clear in my hands and I'm gonna drop it on there. That way I'm bringing in some more texture but I'm not adding any more color on top. So that is really looking good and it's gonna hold its shape better because my epoxy is really starting to set up. So wherever those alcohol blobs hit, it's just gonna kinda move a little bit and it'll stay there. So I think I'm gonna actually call this a day and um, it'll really look a lot different than it does now in about four or five hours. All right, thank you for watching, I appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up. If you like this video, subscribe and uh, hit the little bell so you'll get notifications when we update the channel. Thank y'all and have a great day.